um, this is your time with me and our trainee coaches to um, basically, if you have something that you want to share, you have a challenge that you're facing at the moment, you need a different perspective on something, it's really just to bring that to the table and for me to help you coach, be coached on it. Um, coaching really, it's quite simple. It helps you see a different perspective and that's all quite often that is needed to help you move forward in the direction that you want to go. So I'm Anne-Marie, for anybody who is, it's the first time that you're meeting me. Mm. I'll just let some more people in. Yep. So I'm Anne-Marie, obviously owner of the Soul Awakening Academy. And we have various courses and you may well be taking one of our courses. We The first hour of this session is dedicated to our master spiritual life coaches and uh, trauma facilitators. But we have so many courses at the Soul Awakening Academy um you know from mindset to meditation so it's more than likely you're taking one of them and this really is to help you see how powerful coaching can be and if anybody is working with other people I just think coaching is such an amazing skill in a work setting but also in a personal setting with your relationships your relationship with yourself and the relationship you have with yourself is is the biggest relationship of your life you know um, who, how do you want to feel when you're taking your last breath? Maybe not a great thought, but how do you want to look back on your life? What type of legacy do you want to leave? How do you want to feel when you're kind of taking your last breath? Let's say um, it is all about fulfillment and personal empowerment um, and really kind of shedding those layers of the conditioning that happens to us when we're children to be able to make the decisions that are truly in alignment with our true self. I know that sounds cliche, but it's not, it's so true. So I'm here for you guys, guys and girls. So this is your time now. So normally when I coach, it'll take 10, 15 minutes for each person, depending on the topic. But who would like to go first? Don't be shy, just unmute yourself and just, um, just volunteer yourself if you feel called to do so. I'll go. Oh. Both at the same time, then Tom. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll take the I'll take the back seat then. I'll take. The oh back. no no, you go you go. I'm all up for jumping first. <laughs> <laughs> Is it me then? Are you go ready for, for it, Thomas? Oh. I'm ready. Yeah. So there's probably quite a few things, but the one that's like coming to the front of my mind <clears throat> a little bit at the moment is with obviously this course but also my own spiritual journey the deeper i'm going uh, and have been a lot over the last four months more than ever i would say the more i feel like i'm probably disconnecting with people if you want maybe yeah. because i feel like i don't know i'm going deeper with inside myself and on my spiritual journey and i feel less connected to maybe a number of people that would have been I would have been felt connected with prior to that. Uh, kind of understand it. I think it's part of the journey and the course of it. Uh, but sometimes it's still a bit of a difficult thing to actually swallow. If that makes sense. It does make sense. Um, is this causing you some kind of anxiety? Not anxiety, anxiety, but it's causing a little bit of pressure. Yeah, but it's, it's weird because I understand it, if you want, but I know I'm going through a shift. I know I'm going through a transition. But mm. it, even though I feel like I, I do understand it, it doesn't make it feel any easier to go through. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just pulling some cards around. It. That's why I'm asking that, that question. But, yeah, you are going through uh, 
changes definitely you're moving forward quite quickly but there's all you know when we are kind of separating ourselves and it is natural that you do that um we can feel so guilty and it depends on who the relationships are with if they're with family that's you know there's just so much wrapped up in our family dynamics isn't it so is it around fat but just bear in mind this is being recorded and will be shared for social media so just to um just to make that point again but um you know is this causing you is this family is it friendship groups is it a mix i would say it's probably definitely people close to me so yeah, yeah family yeah you know uh first line family or second line family if you want uh yeah, maybe, I don't know, sometimes a bit of frustration because, like, you almost feel like, and I hate this because it's like almost like you feel like your ego speaking a little bit, but you've got to be honest with the situation. It's like, I feel like I see things a bit differently and I feel things a little bit differently and sometimes I feel like the people close to me don't kind of feel it the same and yeah. makes me just maybe view right. them and the situations we're in a little bit differently than I would yeah. have done before. Almost a little bit of frustration and guilt. You, that was a real good one. Like guilt, you feel like, you know, I feel guilty that I can't maybe get on the same level as them all the time. Do you know what I mean? You all right, love? I'm all right, thanks, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was going to say, um, anybody else can just chip in. I'm just going to open it up because I think it's like, it's something that we all kind of can probably resonate with. You know, when we are kind of moving on and we're bringing a lot of self-awareness into our life and, and our triggers and our emotional ties and our perspectives, naturally we will kind of like move away from certain environments. Um, mm. I found the family dynamic side very, very hard actually, probably one of the biggest healing processes comes through the family dynamics because it's what we're born into it's it's we're indoctrinated into their belief system and how we should be they're told how we fit in here and what we should do and who we should be basically so so much of our conditioning comes in family dynamic the family system can everybody kind of on some level maybe resonate with what thomas is saying about when we do start to work we kind of changes we feel get made within those systems i absolutely feel like exactly the same thomas i feel like and with what Marie's just said now i feel like with my my family that i grew up with versus my family that i live with now so like my partner and kids we're in one circle and i actually feel like the family circle that i'm in now like my household is more difficult than my one that I grew up with. My The one that I grew up with, we've all come through changes. And actually, it's really nice that the, I've been going through a spiritual kind of journey for about 10 years. But now my mum looks to me for healing and coaching. And so she's going through all her stuff now, but she's looking to me to help her. And I and I love that. It's nice that we can do that together. I love that um, card that I just pulled around, everything that's getting discussed here. Um, what a beautiful card that is. Can you see that? Okay. Beautiful. Better? Yeah. What a, what a gorgeous, like, kind of spiritually led um, card that is about, you know, going off on this journey quite often. I mean, it reminds me a bit of the hermit card in the tarot. You know, it can be a bit of a solo journey. And we have to light our own path in a way, but also believe in, you know, I don't know what people's belief systems are, but, you know, believing in some kind of like higher power potentially and the stars, whatever. But really, it's about following our own true path. And it's the one that we have to illuminate for ourselves. And I feel like that illuminate for yourselves, but also then be the light that other people can follow. So in that way, like I was just saying with my mum, she's looking at something and I just want everyone in my household to also see that light. <laughs> that would be helpful. So I'm with you on that, Thomas. I find it really difficult when you're mm. changing, changing I, I, avenues. I, I would actually, I know it's difficult, Adele, um, thanks for sharing that, but 
when people don't see the light, see your perspective, let's say, because it is all about perspectives, it's it's actually it's, it's actually um, part of your your healing. It's part of your healing is having people around you like that. It's a little bit like uh, Nelson Mandela, you know, the situation and Viktor Frankl, you know, their situation that they're in, they can't change, you know, they can't, they can't change it, but they change themselves regardless of their external situation. So sometimes, even though we feel frustrated, it's exactly what should be happening. Because recognizing that people are limited, ourselves included, we all have limitations. So fair enough when we're up, you know, maybe we say up leveling a little bit, you know, we're expanding our consciousness really. We're kind of, and the, the way that we're doing that is we're taking a different perspective. So we are stretching ourselves, but every, you know, that's not to say that. So it's recognizing and accepting in a way People are where they are. We are where we are, and can't always change other. We well, definitely can't change other people or external situations. So, what do we do then? We take that light within. We follow our own path, regardless of external. Because sometimes you might find is when you are in a situation where people are speaking your language, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's not rosy. You will get triggered. You will realize they still have their limitations. You have, you know, it's not about the external so much, but I get what you're saying. I get a lot more like I go in and out of it quite a bit. So sometimes I feel that way. And then sometimes with, with other things I read and listen to away from the course, uh, it's about just giving myself and my journey the love. And then when I am in situations with other people, just also give them the love for what they are and who they are and where they are, as well as myself. When I do that, it just disintegrates because I'm being completely authentic with myself. And that's all we really have, isn't it, at the end of the day? But then, obviously, you can never hold that you know that balance. Sometimes you fall off and then they get a bit frustrated again. But then I go away and meditate on it. And then I feel a lot better again. So I think that, you know, that works for me. I don't know whether that makes sense to you, Anne-Marie, but. Yeah, it does. And, uh, you know, quite often I can still find myself um, being a bit judgy of people. Um, as Adele says, like, you know, if they're not think, why are they not thinking that then? You know, why are they not just doing that? It's like, it's like simple, like the solution is there type of thing or why are they living their life like that why are they making those choices why are they there do you know what I mean and that can be it can do all that does to me to my nervous system is throw it completely off balance so you know recognizing that we're all flawed actually and we're all limited and um everybody's living in their own reality as well you know, everybody has this 3D kind of VR thing going on in the, in their brain and, and they're creating their reality and you'll know when it's the right time to, to... We've all been in situations where we've said to somebody we love or whatever, have you thought about this? Why don't you do this? This would be really good for you. And they're like, oh, whatever, whatever. Six months later, somebody else says it or they hear it somewhere else and they're like, got this idea, you're going to do it. And you're like, I said that, I said that six months ago and you weren't interested. It's all about timing. We are only ever in charge of our internal systems, nobody else's. And I know it can feel frustrating. I get frustrated now, still. And I have to check myself. Mm. It's my frustration. It's not theirs. It's <clears> mine. It's mine to own and take ownership of. Okay. Anybody else? Who else was spoke to? Um, Kel, Kelly. Yeah, I think mine's are probably a little bit like Thomas's, but it's it's a little bit being family. I find it's work, and this week it has triggered me a lot, um, massively. Um, 
and I'm not sure now if it's just the way I'm looking at the situation and like you say your own personal perception of what's going on versus what actually is yeah going on that's actually triggering it or whether it's something else that's in me that I've now got to find that's that's why it's triggering it because it comes up a lot it has come up a lot this week and it's gotten progressively worse as the weeks come on which says to me it wants to go so it's basically with me and work um I've got a new job well I had a new job at the beginning of the year before I started the course um I moved into a project coordinator role but a higher level of it but I'm in a industry that I have no idea of none oh yeah um then halfway through that my boss that I had left I got moved to another team but I've kind of gone from doing nothing to everything but not had enough training in between so I find I'm getting frustrated because I'm just doing like the menial admin stuff which I really hate doing and I said that when I started the job I wanted to learn to do more not just do menial admin stuff because it bores me I don't feel like that I'm growing in that area. I know how to do admin. I know I have to learn how to do some of that to train people, but doing it continuously for weeks is beginning to grate massively on me um, to the point where we're now finding that I'm slipping up on things and I'm finding that the person that's now my boss is constantly moaning at me all the time, like, you've not done this, you've not done that. But then the apprentice we have <laughs> doesn't get that. Like, he makes mistakes and he doesn't get the same that I can see doesn't get the same level of you're not done that right why have you not done that right it's sort of so like the it's swept under the rug. sorry i think somebody's just got their mic muted hmm. um yes so yeah. yeah i get you so how is it so, making you feel like i know you're feeling frustrated but what's it frustrated um angry um feel a little bit like I'm not really worth anything at the moment. Excuse me. Is that for me? No. No, okay. Yeah, it's it's not a nice place. So how much of it is actually true? And how much of it is in you? I think I know a good portion of it is probably in me because I'm not seeing the whole story because obviously there's conversations that go on that I don't see. Um, and I know there's a lot of whispered conversations that go on between people as well, which doesn't help. Yeah. Um, but I think some of it is also very much them. Yeah. Because it is very, very cliquey where I work. Mm -hmm. Very. Okay. So if you can't. So the thing that triggers you the most, right, is that feeling of being worthless. Is that what you said? Not worth very much at the moment. Yeah. So yeah. why is that so upsetting and emotional and triggering for you? I think it's not so much for validation. I don't feel I need validation for what I do. I know I can do what I do, I can do, and I can do it well. Once given the opportunity to, to do it, and, and be trained to do that and given that but I think it's more the when I'm needing that help and I'm wanting someone to show me what to do and go okay it's not that I want you to validate that I'm doing the right thing it's the fact that I know you want something done particularly that way and I want to make sure I'm hitting what you need me to do rather than fumble along and think have I done the right thing and then find that I've not done the right thing or I'm dropping the ball and it's that, that thought of not knowing that someone's not there to come back to me and say, actually, no, you're okay. Let's let's help you with this. I can see you're not done that right. Instead of just going straight down my neck and going, well, you've not done that right. It's not very good. It's a bit shit. And going, actually, okay. And then everyone copied it on the email, so everybody sees it. It's like, just come to me. Not me. Yeah, I understand that. And, I, you know, how, as you're explaining that, Kelly, uh, you know, I can imagine that would feel like really not nice, not nice for anybody, no matter how strong you are, to, um, you know, potentially feel, you know, you kind of being called out, really, but more mm. that the support's not there to help you. Um, so it might feel like you're on a, a bit of a hamster wheel to continue making the mm. mistakes without any support or guidance to kind of show you the ropes fully a little bit of that and sometimes it's a case i do do what i think i need to do and then the goalposts change 
So even if I have done it right, all of a sudden then the goalposts change, but the goalposts aren't told to me. I don't find out until after I've done it, the goalposts changed. So it's, I can imagine the frustration. Yes. So where coaching is concerned, and thanks for bringing it up, I think it's like, it's really, really good to get it out. So where can I help you in this moment? Like, where do you want to look at that? I want to be able to go into my job and not go into, well, go into it and know that no matter what comes at me, it doesn't trigger me like that. I can sit back and go, do you know what? That's okay. I, I, you know, I've made a mistake. I'll just play one and get on with it rather than have it constantly coming at me and then it progressively triggering me more and more and more. I don't want to come out of work just feeling like crap, basically. So it's recognising what's in your control. Mm -hmm. What is in your control that you might not be doing enough of right now to change the situation to how you want it to be? I'll probably say asking for more help. But then when I have asked, I have recognised that and I have asked for more help. And it's usually I get, yeah, I'll come to you in a minute. And then it doesn't happen. Um, what and then you... even then I, I then prompt again later. And they're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then they prompt again. And it's still... It's still almost like, oh, yeah, we'll do that. And then it's, oh, yeah, we'll do it again. And then it doesn't happen. Okay. So then what else is in your control to make the situation better? I mean, I could go up higher and try higher. I mean, we have had a big meeting this week to discuss how the team's not really working very well. Um, I could always go higher and just say, it's not working for me. I need to either move teams. Okay. Or put, or put me into a different a different department. Okay. Anything else that you haven't or you have been thought thinking about or haven't do? You know, what other options have you got? I did debate leaving, but it's then finding what I want to do to leave too. Mm -hmm. That I have looked as an option. Yeah. Anything else? I'm not sure at this point. I think I feel like I've exhausted most of what I can think of at the minute. Okay. So where are you in a place of like, okay, this is like bothering you, starting to bother you, kind of like, oh, now this is like, I, I'm really bothered about this and come Monday morning, things are going to change. Like where where are you on the? I've got to the point where it's past the, it's bothering me to the, I really don't want to go to work in the morning. Not so much in the morning, but yeah. I've booked every Monday off at the moment just to use annual leave or because I just don't want to go in on a Monday. Um, no, I have to still face it the Tuesday, but it's like it's the point where I like I don't really want to be there. Okay, because what emotions are are present that you can notice when you are thinking about going into work, going into work? Like, what emotions are you carrying? Who are you becoming on that Monday morning going in? I can tell I get I get angry automatically. I get very frustrated and angry in the morning. I just like, there's many times I've just got like, driven down and gone, I just don't want to be here. I just feel horrible and miserable. Yeah, and the anger comes up and then I just stay in that mood for the rest of the day. It doesn't change. Unless something really good happens and something flips it, then yeah, I'm usually in a I don't want to be here mood. Anger is usually the last emotion to be expressed because it's kind of it's the it's the last resort it's normally we feel these other mm. emotions and that tends to anger because there's no outlet so what is underneath the anger that's a really good question anger just covers it so much at the moment i'll go with probably very depressed i'll get quite depressed quite moody um, what emotions are there? Definitely sadness. Um, what should I think? Will that be physically there? You know, you're not physically in the room and you have to try and put yourself in that room. A bit empty, I guess, as well. Just like empty. Invisible.
yeah, it's quite lonely again as well. Yeah, I thought I'd go with that. Yeah. So is there anything underneath that? <clears throat> mm. Not that I can think of at the minute. Okay. Because I pulled this card, this um interactive card came out. So when you look at that child, does that remind you of how you are describing how you might how you are feeling? Probably a bit, yeah. Yeah. And is this a theme that you notice, Kelly? Is this yeah. So who is your boss reminding you of? I wouldn't say much of my dad because he doesn't. I know there's aspects of him that's in there. Like for being a perfectionist, he has to have things done in a very specific way. Um, but there's not the the anger element or anything like that. But it's weird. It's like he talks. Oh, I suppose there is a little bit then because your face is quite nice about it. But in emails, he can say it's quite so it's seething in an email. But as my dad was the opposite, he can be quite good in an email. It's not but, really their yeah. characteristics. It's it's your yeah. relationship to it. It could be a female, do you know what yeah. I mean? It's, still, it's yeah. your relationship to this yeah. other person and authority. So yeah. is this a reminiscent of a relationship dynamic that you notice? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you're in a relationship dynamic, right? That's so that's so triggering been there so triggering this is so good <laughs> it is honestly you see these things as as, as gifts <laughs> and shitty bows <laughs> but when you heal this when you break through this and the, the thing that's going to heal it is you stepping into the version of you that needs to take ownership of this that's done done deal then if yep. you go in on monday morning the version of kelly that takes ownership of this situation, you will feel completely different. Mm -hmm. So you're in a, a, a relationship dynamic. There's so many different names and concepts around this relationship dynamic. You can see it as the ego states, you can transfer and some projection and uh, internal family systems. There's so much, but basically, when mm -hmm. you encounter a situation, you revert back to child mm -hmm. who couldn't do anything yep. about it, who was alone, yep. helpless, hopeless, powerless, all of that stuff. Brain response. This is this is you know all of us said before that mm -hmm. automatic yep. brain triggers that go into place. That's what's happening here. So how? And do you agree with that rather than me just... Yeah. yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Massively agree with you. Looking at it from that perspective, yeah, I could probably say that is a case of that triggers and I'm going straight back to little girl who didn't have the ability to change all of that and that's what comes straight up. Even though I probably do recognise that that's happening, it's stopping that, that trigger, going up and letting them know that I don't need to go down like that anymore. And were you ever like, um, did you experience, because I pulled this card and maybe you can interpret it. What does that mean? Does that resonate with you at all? Weirdly, that reminds me of me when I used to paint. Oh, okay. <laughs> and were you, were, you that... <laughs> were you recognized for that? Like, did, did you have any praise? Like, what? why has that card come up? Yeah, when I was, uh, I, I've drawn most of my life. My mum always used to say I should have been born with pencils and crayons on the end of my fingers. No um, yeah, and that was the one thing that always, like, was a showcase thing. Like, if, again, if my dad did anything, he was like, the one thing he'd say is, oh, Cal, send us some artwork. I want to send next one that shows some people the stuff that you've done. And that was the thing that, that he always used to go, yeah, I want to show someone that, that you've done that and you've how awesome you did with that. So that's what's missing. That's mm. that's what you're not being able to... Ex that's what you feel is, is missing in this situation that you're in. Nobody's seeing you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's, and I think you said that at the beginning, didn't you? So that's what, mm -hmm. you know, this... Who you become 
when you're in that in that scene. Describe that person. If you were to go in, what? Okay, what I'm trying to say is, yeah. what can you get from this um, card that is saying that can potentially help you step into that person who knows how great they are? I mean, looking even just looking at the imagery on that, it's like I can see like there's the mask at the back. There's like the happiness and the sadness is the one that's hiding the one behind it. That the person in front of it is like creating this amazing piece of artwork and shouldn't be afraid to express that piece of artwork because that's in here, not out there. So then this card is was in the middle of this. What's that story telling you about the situation and what you can do about it? Ignore my finger. But that person, that the little girl, that person, little child at the end is like who I was. The person in the middle looks like someone offering a helping hand and growing up. And then the person at the end is expressing everything they need to express. So what can you do to move this forward in a way that's really helpful for this situation? I think I just need to get up into work and just like say it as it is. And go in and say, you want me to do stuff? So then start telling me how to do it and stop expecting me to know what the hell to do. Because yes, I can project coordinate, but unless you tell me how you want me to work, I can't keep get playing the guessing game. I can't mind read. You want me to step up, then start showing me how I step up. So what emotions, thoughts, mindset need to be present? Maybe they're present when you are knowing that you're in your zone as mm. genius. What needs to happen on those levels? Physical, remember the set? Physical, mm -hmm. body, what stance does that need to take? Because no good going in like... No, no, no. And saying, hey, no. you lot need to listen to me. So I know very much a standing up, everything open, nothing nothing crunched in. Maybe the power heels on. <laughs> Another thing about the anger, the anger is the last resort when we've not fully expressed ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Expressing that, that frustration out. Not in a horrible anger pointing finger kind of way but in a very productive saying it as it is in a very professional manner and also naming anger as yeah. anger mm. can dilute it completely but feeling quite angry about this it takes mm. away i'm mm -hmm. you know it just in naming it it's it's out there and it's mm. non-aggressive it's non-offensive it's owning it, it's authentic, mm -hmm. it's assertive. I've actually been feeling quite angry and and also quite not wanting to, to come into mm -hmm. work. And X, Y, Z, whatever feels right in that setting. Yeah. So tell me exactly how you're going to approach this on Monday, Tuesday. It would be more like Tuesday. Um, I'll probably get in, set myself up and then follow my boss and just say to him look well I think he's going to call me anyway because they're having discussions over how we're going to approach working together as a team and I won't be there Monday to be in that discussion so I will see what he comes out and see what he says and then I will give my piece back and say well this is how I'm feeling this is how I see it and this is how I feel it needs to change because unless it changes it's not going to work not okay. for me not for the team Okay, what do you need to maybe shift in your mind, but in your perspective around your boss and how you see him and the dynamic mm. that you have? What, what, what mm. maybe, what are you not seeing in your boss? I guess it's weird because I, I kind of have two bosses it's a bit of a weird situation so the person I work for I work for as a contract manager but my boss is the ops manager that's above him so and I don't really see that much of him so I kind of almost don't see him sort of like I don't see like he doesn't bother he's not really that bothered it's like he's only really bothered when he needs to be bothered he's never really that present so the one but who I you have this dynamic with yeah what because you're you've got them in a holding pattern right mm. 
got them in a holding pattern and you don't know who they are you've just got mm -hmm. them in a holding pattern because of you know your past mm -hmm. um so so we need to change that now we need to break that bond so how what do you not recognize in this person that is also true about them I kind of go, don't really have, I kind of don't actually see them as an authority figure. I do and I don't, if you get what I mean. I understand that he's so like a so contact manager, but not. Let me say that in a different way. What are you not seeing about this person? Or what are you not recognizing? What are you not um what are you what have you been blind to about this person, not his role, but this person? Mm -hmm. As human being, yeah. what have you been blind to so far about this person that you've not recognized before? But when you think about it now, you can say, ah, oh, actually, yeah, he's a good dad, you know. To be fair, it's weird. It's weird to say I kind of try and look at it, him from a different perspective when I get into that mood. So I'll see, like, the fact that I know he's under pressure. I can see he's under pressure. So there's a lot of times for him not to do with me, it's what he's under. I know he's probably got issues at home, if he has issues at home, because I know he works a lot at home. He's got a daughter as well. He's about the same age as my son. So I know he has pressures where I'm probably not seeing his family quite as much as he wants to because he's too busy working. So I do see all of those things in him. And I try not to, I try to let myself see those more, but I know sometimes I that that gets blinded a lot because I'm of all the annoyance and the frustration. I kind of like forget that those bits are all all there. It's not just he has got all the crap going on. It's not just about what I'm doing. And it, and his anger might be his default setting mm. because he's so whatever X Y Z. Who knows? But what would be helpful in this situation to maybe think or feel? about mm. him as a human being mm. what might be helpful in this situation that will help you make a shift probably seeing him as another equal rather than seeing him as, a, as somebody above me seeing him as another equal that it doesn't matter what title we've got exactly so how does seeing him as an equal to you how is that going to shift things for you Power dynamic won't be there. Yeah. No, it'll be a fat, he's above me, I'm below. Dynamic, it'll be. Doesn't matter. Can you, in your mind now, visualize, imagine the change in the tone, the conversation, the physical body? Can you visualize the change? in you bringing him mm. down and shrink him down to you know in your mind's eye wherever he is you know think about ego states one's above one's below one's parent one's child imagine mm. shrinking him down if it helps he can be smaller than you or mm. eye level now imagine having mm. a conversation yeah that does feel better. So do that over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Bring him down to your level. How do you, how, you know, you know, how will your conversation change? Hi, Roger, how are you? How's your weekend? How's the family? I'd really mm -hmm. love to have a five minute chat with you rather than walking on or saying anything. I'm not happy about, you know, and working yourself mm -hmm. up. So sit with that this weekend. And then see how that changes things. Is that helpful? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Yeah. No, that's 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 helpful. Yeah, I think I do just need to sit with that and feel that out over the weekend and get it into a a good place before I go back in on Tuesday. Because I've got the time to do that this weekend. Yes. What has helped you most out of that conversation? Definitely seeing where it's coming from seeing exactly where that's coming from it's like I could almost pinpoint it and I knew probably something to do with me internally and my younger self but not really seeing it seemed like actually having it put in front of my face was actually 
really helped. So you, you can see it in your head, you can play it in your head, but when someone actually physically or verbalises it, it's a lot. Yeah, well done. Okay. So, yeah, it's great knowing the origin, but it's then, okay, mm. that's that's where it's come from, but this is, this is who I am now. So mm. what changes do I need to make? So well done for recognising mm. all of that. Yeah, no. And just for the people, the coaches, oh bless, just for the coaches um, listening to that, just notice that I didn't say to Kelly, you need to go in, you need to, you know, you need to go and do this. I didn't offer any of my crap advice. I'm not Kelly and I don't know what's best for her. I just offered questions that expand her perspective. Like, what have you not thought about that might be helpful in this situation? You could say that to anybody in any situation, right? If you're helping them tap in to their resources to find their answers, I am not, you know, I'm not like limiting them with with my thoughts, opinions, advice on what she should do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, right. We've got about ten minutes. Anybody else like to bring anything? Uh, would I be able to go, please? Yes. <laughs> um. So I don't know, this might be quite a broad one, so I'm not sure, but kind of similar to actually Dee's story earlier. So in 2021, I also caught a virus, which completely changed my life. Um, I was very poorly for a long time. I was bed bound for a year and a half. And then... Um, <clears throat> You know, it's affected my whole life now. Um, before that, I was super active, you know. I never took two minutes rest. I was um, a professional boxer. I um, worked full time. I was always out with my friends. Had a very kind of busy, crazy life. And <clears throat> obviously since getting ill, you know, my life has changed completely. Like it's obviously completely different. I've had to slow down. I've had to stop boxing, which was, for me, was everything, you know, it was my life. It was um, my passion, my therapy, it was everything. And um, like I say, my life changed very significantly. I've lost a lot of friendships because they just, I can't do the things that I used to and struggle to understand that, you know, well, why is she not coming out? Why can't she do this? So it's like I say, my life is, looks completely different to how it looked before this. And I suppose one thing that I've really struggled with is I've kind of lost who I am because before that, you know, my life felt, this is who I am. This is where I'm meant to be. This is, this is me. And after losing kind of boxing, losing friendships, you know, um, I've kind of been like, I don't know who I am anymore. And I've spent, you know, the last few years really trying to build kind of a new life for myself and think okay what 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 does my life look like now you know and I've tried so many different hobbies I've tried kind of lots of different job roles and you know what what I want to change a lot because you know for me because I'm not so active anymore like work's a big part of my life and I suppose by really because work's become a big focus of my life I've realized I realized how unhappy I was in work and, you know, I've tried some different roles over the last few years and I've just really struggled to find what feels like me now. And then, you know, I've tried lots of different hobbies and I've struggled to find something that just I love as much as I love boxing. And I've just really felt like I don't know who I am anymore. And, you know, for me, this course was kind of a big step in me kind of, you know, moving forwards. And I've done a lot over the kind of last few years to really try and find myself but I still find myself really stuck in that, you know, who am I? What, how do I find myself again? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. Oh my gosh, what a story. That's incredible. Um, and obviously I'm really, you know, so, sorry that you've been through that. It's so life-changing. Um, and I say sorry with not with any pity or, or anything right. like that, because obviously all these transitions we go through are meant to be, they are, getting us somewhere yeah 
but it's just I I I hear you, you know, and the same with D. I like I hear you and I feel you as well. So I just want to kind of like honor that. Do you know what I mean? With respect. Um, who were? How old are you, by the way? Um, I'm thirty three. I thought so. So <laughs> this is not to uh, put throw any woo woo crap on the situation, but um, at thirty we do go through a major life transition uh and and it's the it's the it's the one i went through the the biggest life transition i went through was at 30 and it's the one that can throw your life into complete deck of cards and who knows where they're going to land but yeah. it's can be the one that it's the biggest catalyst for your next level of growth mm -hmm. and it's not pleasant so who what is it from the boxing? Who who do you feel you've lost? Um, you know, I, well, I suppose I lost a big, it was such a huge part of my life. You know, I was training every day. It was something that I wanted to do moving into the future. You know, I just got my professional license. So, you know, I lost a big part of me, but I also lost, you know, all the people around me as well. And that, you know, all the friendships that I had through, um, through boxing. Yeah, and is that the biggest loss that you've felt? I think so, yeah. Like, thinking about it in that way, I think I'm constantly trying to find something, a passion, a hobby, something that that replaces that, and I've just really struggled to do that, if that makes sense. Okay, right. This is deep, and I could be way off here, so, you know, I don't... I don't know. I don't have like all the answers, but I just kind of like go with what feel like might help you. Mm -hmm. What were you not seeing when you were in that life? What were you missing? What were you not noticing? What were you not standing still for? Who were you neglecting? Um... Probably because I was always so busy you know I spent all my time at the, at the gym um probably like you know I probably ne neglected people around me people close to me because it became you know such an important thing in my life it became you know something that um yeah it took up a lot of my time <laughs> yeah yeah and what is this now doing and the reason I'm asking these questions is this so this is the card that I pulled when you were saying about, you know, your lifestyle and everything and when you were doing the box and everything. That was the card that came to mind. Does that resonate with how you felt at the time? Do you mean when I was when I was boxing and when I was kind of busy? Let me have yeah. a look. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I was asking those questions. Yeah. And, and then the next question is, well, you know, who should be coming? Where is this taking her to? Yeah. What does that card land with you? You know, what does it speak to you about? Um. Well, I suppose the, the one before, you know, uh, you know, like I say, I was neglecting the people around me. I was probably neglecting myself, my self-care. And then, you know, I suppose that card um I was you know what it, it, it's funny actually because even though I look back and I think you know I've lost a lot of friendships and now I feel lonely I was probably actually quite lonely at, at the time um because I never because I, I suppose because I was always so busy I never had like even though you know, like I say, boxing was a big focus because I was always so busy, you know, doing lots of things, working full time, doing boxing, going out with friends, doing whatever. I suppose I, I was, you know, pulling myself in all different directions and doing so many different things that I probably never did anything fully, if that makes sense. And I probably neglected a lot of things. And and it was probably in, in that sense, you know, I was probably on, on my way to burnout. <laughs> Yeah. 
So the reason I pause like that, I know it can be a bit uncomfortable, but it's it's so powerful in coaching. And Lauren, I know you're training, so that's why I'm saying it. Yeah. When you pause like that, what came up for you when I gave you that silence? Like what happened on an emotional level? Like what came up for you? What were you reflecting on? What was landing with you? I don't know, just everything that you, you said, you said really, because it it's really funny because like, like I said, I, I mourn my old life a lot and I mourn all the things I used to be able to do. And, you know, I get frustrated with my body now that it can't do the same things that it used to. But at the same time, you know, there's, there's also positive things that have come with slowing down and it's given me space to really reflect on because I, I never realized that I wasn't happy with my job and it didn't really align with my values at the time because I was always just so focused on everything else that it, it it never really I never really focused on any one thing enough to really think about was this right for me is this life right for me I was just 100 miles an hour all the time but I suppose one really good thing that's come out of this is that I'm now in that point where I'm really reflecting on okay what are my values what do I really want out of life where where where's my life going next so in a way I think you know that being able to slow down has been positive in 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 you know some respects so it's yeah it's, it's, it's just difficult it's, thrown into that that card really is about contemplation. I mean, you can say so many things about that card uh, mm -hmm. given the context of the situation, but in this situation, as you're describing your life, this is a card of like, okay, sit down. The room's not pretty. Mm -hmm. Environment's not how you want it to be, but you need to stop and you need to think and you need to reflect and you need to contemplate. If you've not given yourself any... If you've not been in touch with yourself at all before, then this is what you are going through. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It is. Like I say, I've just, it's made me reflect on every single part of my life. Like I say, my job, my relationships, who it, 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 I've reflected on everything because it's all be just become so much more amplified because like I've lost some things everything else seems to have amplified in a way and it's kind of just made me stop and think about all those things and what is right for me and what what like I say what aligns with my values and um so yeah it's yeah just ask you another question um where did all where did that come from that kind of like you know the and we do do this when you know in our 20s and things like that we identify you know everything else we attach our kind of our ego self our identity is is attached to things that's naturally what happens to most of us you know in the 20 the years of 20 to 30 so what had led you to that to becoming that version of yourself so do you mean in terms of thinking about who I, who I am? And... The boxer, the not a minute to themselves, not feeling their value, not really giving, you know, what do I want? Um, I don't really know. Um, I don't know. That's really it's difficult. Um. I suppose I always just felt better when I was busy and I don't know why that is but I always just felt better as maybe it was me avoiding thinking too deeply I don't know but I always just felt better when I was I was busy um so that's a card that I pulled around that mm -hmm. what does that mean to you around what you're saying having I got my guard up having a shield up yeah like what were you protecting yourself from do you know what I mean that's like you know how you say maybe just not in touch with your own feelings really potentially yeah yeah definitely I think that makes sense <laughs> what what I mean you don't have to share it here by the way because this is you know touching on your 
you know, your childhood and, you know, you don't have any, you don't need to share it here, but I just will ask you to think about, and you can obviously message me, um, just to think about the girl that was driving the bus at that time. And why, you know, why not saying it was wrong in any way, shape or form. Mm. It's just that when your identity completely shatters, yeah, it's important to think about why was I ident who who was that? Mm -hmm. And and who do I want to become? Yeah. That's really important. Mm -hmm. Who do I want to become? If you weren't in touch with your feelings before, why was that? Like just why was why? And then okay, well, who do I want to be now? What feelings do I want to experience the most of? What feelings do I want others to experience in my presence? You are recreating the mold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. And again, um, like you just kind of touched on, I suppose, like when I was younger, um, you know, things that I went through, men, I, I closed off from my emotions. You know, I went to school put on a put on a face and pretended like everything was okay when it wasn't and I grew up very much doing that so yeah I suppose that makes sense in terms of who I was and maybe avoiding thinking too much about feeling and emotions and being in touch with myself and po probably why being busy for me suited me at the time and why now my life being different and quiet and giving me a time to reflect and focus is probably something that's been you know obviously it'd be difficult anyway but probably you know a reason why I am finding it really difficult and really having those questions about who I am mm. what's coming up for you now in this moment <laughs> um kind of I suppose kind of what, what I said before in the earlier session that there's probably still a lot of things that I probably need to heal within myself that I've avoided my whole life and like I say this course for me has been amazing because it's it, I've learned so much about myself and maybe those parts of me that I do need to heal um that I've just like I say completely neglected and you know, like I say, my life slowing down and being quieter just gave me that time to to really reflect. But, you know, I, I kind of still I'm still like, I don't know what to do with those feelings and those emotions and how to direct them and where to direct them. So I think there's some healing that, you know, I still need to do. 100 percent. And that that's part of the process. So this was a card. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So that just jumped out at me. What does that resonate with you now? I can read this so many different ways. Um, I suppose the first thing that jumps out to me is how my life used to be. So kind of a bit of a show, wearing a mask. <laughs> um, and not, you know, not my kind of authentic self. And how can that help you going forward, this image? Um, like I say just kind of you know like I say like my my life not being such a show and like it kind of felt it was more just connecting with me and who I am and what I truly want mm -hmm. yeah and another interpretation of this card that I'd like to offer yeah. is and this is from my story mm. is when I was going through that major transition and I was like I do not know who I am in fact I do not hate the person mm -hmm. that I had become up until that point and I literally sat on the end of the bed and I thought oh my god like and my whole identity was gone and I, it was literally like okay you can construct who you want to become yeah literally have the ability to remodel ourselves and it was like okay if that's true then 
what attributes do I want? How, what characteristics do I want? And it was like, what do you like in other people that you want to become? Yeah. And, and you know, that saying like, fake it till you make it in a way, it's true. Mm -hmm. Because your brain with repetition believes it. And then that's the reality. That's who you are automatically. Yeah. And this in a way is like, okay, what's the next performance? And perform mm. it until, it, you know, perform the things that you want to become. Yeah. Until they are you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. And Dee says she's really resonated with your story. Uh, she says, you know, I'm in tears hearing Lauren's story because it's like that's me talking, saying how am I going to be able to do this? So, yeah, you're both absolute kind of pillars of inspiration. And, um, you know, Lauren, that's such an amazing story to eventually be able to share well, when you're thinking about the people that you want to help. Yeah. And, and, Potentially, you know, other people, maybe not the exact same situation, but where their, their rug has been pulled in that way. Mm -hmm. where this yesterday and you're not going to be it tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? So that might also be an area where you can shine your light. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, um, yeah, that's got come to the end of the session. Would anybody like to share anything as we say bye-bye? Can I just say thank you to everyone that's actually shared because it takes a lot of courage and to be that vulnerable and just thank you, really. Um, and you will find a way forward. Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you. It's, it is a, incredible um for people who share thank you cam um yeah everybody who shared today everybody anybody who speaks you know it takes a lot i am i am not i am rubbish when i get on things like this i i don't i don't speak i can go very quiet so i appreciate it and i just appreciate you all for being here as well um and i'm being on this journey because even if you just listen to what other people have to say and something lands with you and then you can change your perspective, it's just really helpful for you to move forward in your own life. And hello to Adele's baby. She's so cute. Hello. <laughs> she was just, when you were all saying thank you to each other, she was doing sign language for thank you. It was so cute. <laughs> Say thank you. Hi, baby. Say bye. You waving. Bye. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Lots of love. Thank you. I'll see you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.